I've been working on dynamic controllers for some 50 years, based in large part on bad experiences in the studio with a traditional compressor limiter or two. I would build prototypes of an idea based in large part on David Blackmer's work with DBX. I would build a prototype, take it into the studio, and use it in a session. Most often a lead vocal, occasionally an instrument. Much later, going to overdubs, I'd use it on everything, uh, just to see how it performed on a banjo or a glockenspiel. Or... I would take early prototypes around with me to every session I did, and learn something about the prototype that I would later take into the lab. When I moved to Paris, I built a version that um, was all found parts. Uh, it's a breadboard and whatever pot I could find and a meter that happened to be around and, oh, a tuchel as a power connector. From those early experiments, with dynamic controllers. We built a dynamic range controller called the GML8900, and that became the standard for transparent dynamic range controllers. Eventually, as the 8900 became harder to support, the work transitioned to digital, and by 2004, I was showing the MDW DRC1, which was the initial digital version, but it only worked on one DAW and one DSP. Later, we transitioned the work to a standard architecture and the objective of making a native plugin for any DAW. We finally released the MDW DRC2 native in November of 2022 to a great response and terrific reviews. That's 50 years of work on a dynamic range controller, and we think there's nothing else like it.